Now, before I introduce our next speaker, I have a little confession to make. I am not a soccer or a football fan, and I know that's a bit of a problem when you think about our next speaker. Actually, I am a hopeless case. Let me tell you this. I tried to play soccer. I was in a soccer club for two trainings, and then the trainer pulled me to the side and he said, I think this is not for you. But they were throwing balls in my head, and I'm not sure if that's healthy, and it hurts. It hurts. And I also have to admit that I've never been to a stadium and watched one of the games of our famous German Bundesliga, which is definitely one of the things that I will do. I promise that. But even I, even I have observed the career and all of the outstanding achievements of our next speaker. Yes, and he is now going to have an authentic conversation with no one else than Stefan Poikert. He is a serial entrepreneur. He is an investor. He is a business angel and the CEO and co-founder of masterplan.com, a B2B ed tech platform that offers digital learning solutions. Yes, absolutely. And he is having that conversation with one of the most celebrated goalkeepers of the entire history of this game. And yes, I am talking about the Titan, whose talent, whose spirit, and his hard work made him one of the most successful and iconic players of all times. And he lives by the mantra, never give up. I'm not a good example. I'm not really a good example of handling pressure to perform because up to a certain point, I was able to handle it. And then I learned in a very, very painful way how not to do it. He can say whatever he wants. Oliver Kahn was one of the most successful footballers the globe has ever seen. Eight German championships, six DFB cups, three awards for world goalkeeper and so on. But that's not all. Since his time as an active soccer player, Oliver Kahn has constantly developed and grown with his tasks. From goalkeeper to successful graduate of management studies, to company founder, to TV pundit, to founder of the Oliver Kahn Foundation, and finally to chairman of the board of FC Bayern München. Uh, although, <laughs> and that's also what today's conversation is about. Setbacks and failures, the right way to deal with them and how we learn intelligently from failure. What is behind the terms flow and comfort zone? How do I learn from success and failure? How do I learn from my colleagues, employees, and from my environment? Of course, it hurts tremendously when you fail. Of course, there are nicer things than having to listen to criticism. But I actually believe that if the first thing you do is ask, what am I learning now and how do I move on? Then you grow. If your first question is, how can I look smarter next time? then you're stuck. We are proud to welcome you to the power of resilience, Oliver Kahn's master plan for success. I can remember the first bits and bretzels I attended 10 years ago with 100 people and now here with my childhood hero, Oliver Kahn. I'm so excited. 5,000 people want to learn from you, from your career, from your success. But the most important thing, it's football, not soccer, right? Yes, I, <laughs> yes, I already heard it. I already heard it in the introduction, so it's football. Huh? It's not soccer. Huh? In the US, it's OK. In the US, it's OK. Huh? But do we have any people from the US? Yes, so it's fine, I think. Oliver, our last conversation took place in May, and the very last question I asked you, what do you want to learn next? And you shouted at me straight away, nothing, I want to do holidays now. <laughs> yeah, I now, thought this was a good idea yeah, yeah. at that time, yeah. Now with a few months later, time to reflect, what would the Oliver Kahn in September, October 2023 do different, and what do you learned? Well, I think I'm out now. I'm out of the time of, uh, of uh, reflection because I think there is, a, there is a moment, especially when times are not easy, if you have harsh times, then it makes sense. It makes sense to, make, uh, to give you some weeks to go somewhere and reflect about uh, what, what happened, but not too long. Don't dig too deep 
in, this, uh, in your emotions, because I'm a friend, um, you have to come very fast into, into doing, you have to come back um, into action. And I'm always a, a friend of, of options, having options, creating, uh, creating options, because in, in these times, I think um, it's very hard if you are relying on one thing, on one task, on one, on one uh, uh, job. So you always have to think about uh, what happens if I'm out or what can I do uh, if things are not going in the right way. And I'm a big friend, uh, friend of that, but yes, um, I think I reflected one very important thing and you, you saw it here in the, in the int introduction. I think if you are, um, if you are a deep, you are deeply embedded in people's mind as um, the goalkeeper, as the icon, and people have their, you know, their, their, their rememberings about, uh, about you, and it's very hard to, to make something different then. And if you do it in a different way than people would expect, um, then they are a little bit, then they are a little bit confused. <laughs> and I think this is, yeah, this is quite, quite inter interesting. I retired uh, 2008. I think this is a, wow, this is a, this is a long Decade. time. This is 15, 15 years and doing a lot of different things. You know, as you see, uh, founding my own, uh, my own companies and uh, doing a lot of business-related things until uh, at least being CEO of, of Bayern Munich. But that doesn't matter because people are always talking about your legacy and that's okay, that's fine. You know, I'm proud of, of my legacy. But they don't realize that you, maybe that you further developed in 12, in 15 years and that you are a little bit another person. But people mostly want to have Oliver Kahn as the goalkeeper. And this they expect is you to shout in the meeting room and stuff. Absol absolutely. And this is something which is not easy. There's, an, there's a really a, a nice example if you look at Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, he's the action hero, he's the great guy, the, the bodybuilder, and suddenly he changed. He changed everything when he was the governor of California. And believe me, believe me, from a perception, or from our perception, that's quite hard to realize, what is he doing now? He's now the governor of California, and I think this is really, really not easy in life to change perception of people. How do you want to approach it next, in your next stations, or what do you want to do differently than in the beginning? Uh, as, as I said, I don't want to do so many things differently. You know, um, I'm always, a, I'm always a someone who, tr who, has, who tries to create, uh, to create options, and I was building and founding companies, and I was building up on that now, and uh, there were a lot of things going on in the past, and but I will not talk so much about things I maybe will do uh, in, the, in the future. So I think it's better if you do it, and then we can talk about it. That makes a lot of sense. So our talk about today is about resilience, and I think that's the one character trait everyone associated with you. So the ability to withstand stress and, stress and keep going. And I mean, we have a lot of founders uh, in, in the audience today, Obviously not on your level, but they experience the same. Extreme days, key people quit, investors hit on you, maybe clients run away. And my main question is, do you, did you develop, how did you develop dealing with stress over the years? Obviously like habitation and hardening plays a role, but also did you constantly, uh, consciously co cultivated habits and traits? So did you actively w try to work on that or just comes with the time? Well, I think it, it comes with the time. It comes, um, it comes with the, the experience. Yeah. You know, during my career as, an, as, an, as a goalkeeper, as an, as an athlete, you learn, especially if you play for a top club like, uh, like Bayern Munich, you learn to handle, you learn to handle stress. But I think there's, a, there's a, big, a big difference between an athlete and an entrepreneur or an, um, a manager. You've seen both. <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. That's why I can estimate. Um, the, the athlete, the stress or the pressure, pressure situations are coming from two sides, from the physical side and also from the mental side. And as a manager or entrepreneur, it's only, mostly, it's only uh, the, mental, the mental side. 
And bringing both together, you know, maximum stress and power on the physical side and on the mental side, this is quite, quite hard. So it's easier for So you. everything, uh, so w w what will I say? Everything I did after my career as a goalkeeper, I think, was quite um, uh, not easy. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was not easy. But I felt not so, so stressed or I felt not so... Uh, yes, in, uh, in, in, in worse situations or in uh, or burnout situations or something, something like this. Because, um, yes, I think you can take your time, you can take a time out, you, know, you can take a break. I can go, uh, I could go uh, playing golf, I could make some meditation. So there are a lot of things you can do today, you know. And today, and that's uh, also a difference to my time as, uh, as a player, I don't ignore the, the signals mm. from, from, from mental or the signals from the body. If I feel it, and I'm very experienced uh, in that, if I feel, or I feel a little bit over the top, then I, will take, uh, then I will take my time out, no matter, no matter what other people say. Is it also a recommendation to, to founders in the audience to say, okay, at some point you have to stop and take your time off to get perspective again? Yeah, the problem is, um, you have to learn it. This is a learning process. What are the signals in you, in your, in your, uh, in your mental, uh, in your physics? What are the signals? You have to recognize them, and then you have to, to react uh, in the right way. And uh, it's not worth it, you know, to go, to go every day over the top, because the price you are paying, this price is very, uh, very high. So you have to find the balance. You have always find the balance in life, the balance uh, uh, yeah, between uh, performing and also uh, relaxing. That's what I had to learn uh, as an athlete, and then I refined it uh, later um, as a manager, as a founder, or as an entrepreneur. I mean, you learned it the hard way in many different scenarios, right? Yes, absolutely. There, there were some really hard situations uh, when I was uh, when I when I was goalkeeper. I remember, uh, for example, 1999. Uh, I'm not sure this is a really a long time ago, and here are a lot of uh, a lot of young people. Champions League but final. I remember, but I remember it uh, very well when we lost the final against Manchester United in the uh, in in the last two minutes, or in I think in in, in the extra in the extra time. And um, we had a one nil lead, and suddenly in, in two or three minutes it was 2-1 for Manchester United, and we played in, we played in Barcelona. And these are, you know, these are very, uh, very special moments because the club, everyone, the players feel like, like they were destroyed uh, in such a moment. And this is maximum, maximum stress, or if you are playing in a, uh, in a, in a World Cup, and you're in the final and in front of, I think, two billion, two billion people watching this final. If you are making a, a mistake and you have to handle that, this is maximum, maximum stress. And that's what, why, what, why I said it uh, before. Um, there you have the physical and the mental side. And later today, for now for 15 years, it's only the mental side. And for me, that's much more better um, to handle than, uh, than both. Because if you are a player, if you are on the field, you cannot say, oh, I will make a break now, or can I make, uh, can I make a break now, because you play every two or three days, on, and you have to perform on the, on the highest level, and you can't do that year per year per year per year without finding mechanisms for relaxing and for coming down. I can very well remember the Champions League final. I was 14 years old. That was the first 14. time. 14. 14. That was God, the first time so I old. cried in front of a TV. <laughs> Actually true. <laughs> you are now a role model for a lot of people and probably also for a lot of people in the audience. But who are your role models? Maybe now and maybe back in the days and what did you learn from them? I had, <coughs> I had some uh, different, uh, different role models. Um, when I was a player, it was clear there was a, the goalkeepers at that time was Sepp Meyer, my goalkeeping coach for a long time, or Tony Schumacher, the goalkeeper in the uh, in the 80s. But then you change, you you change also also your your role models. Um, I had a great movie at that time. I was always watching 
when I had some, uh, some problems or when it was big, when there were big critics about, about my person, it was uh, Papillon, but, oh. not, but not this, this new movie, the, the older movie with, I think, Steve McQueen. Mm -hmm. Steve McQueen. And I was always, always watching this, this film because it was unbelievable. His willpower, his willpower. Um, he was in jail for 10 years in French Guiana. Yeah. Terrible, uh, terrible. And he tried it, I think, for over 10 years to come out of this, uh, this, in this hard situation. And he tried it and tried it and tried it. And he always, uh, he always fail, failed. And after 10 years, he got it. And this is, you know, this is unbelievable uh, motivating if you are in a hard situation. Or take the, the story of Nelson Mandela, also unbelievable. A man in prison for, I think, over 20 years, never losing, never losing his uh, belief and this is, uh, you know, this is enormous. These are people inspiring, uh, inspiring you. Uh, or, or, or Helmut Schmidt was also a great role model for me, the former uh, chancellor of Germany. Not from a, not from a political, not from a political side. Bavaria here. Be yeah, 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 I know. Not from a, <laughs> not from a political side. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but from his, uh, uh, his, his personality and his ability you know, um, to talk about very um, different things uh, in very uh, easy way so that everyone is understanding. So your own models will change over time. That's what I, that's what I want to say. One thing that really surprised me, we had our shoot with Masterplan on the May 30th this year. And, and on the May 27th, things went quite wild for you personally. So we had to call the- How did you say that? Quite wild. Quite wild. <laughs> So we, 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 had a <laughs> we, had a, we, had, we had a chat the other day <laughs> because we were truly believing, okay, we can't do this, this shoot at this day. We haven't given him some time. We will do it later. We have to rewrite the course. And then we had a chat a day later after this all happened. And you said, what are you talking about? Of course I'm coming. And then you've been there, super professional, delivered on, uh, on point, was a great course. And like, like nothing happened. So how did you do that? And do you have a... Do you have some tips for the audience? Because sometimes as a founder, you also feel like everyone thing is going to shit, the house is burning, but I have to perform now in the pitch or with the client. So how did you manage that? You know, it's not easy to give a, to give a tip, you know, how, how you can do it, because there is not uh, this, this one thing you can do. Uh, this is what I learned year per year per year in professional, when I was professional uh, footballer. When I was an was an athlete, you but learn. Maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you learn. You learn how. You learn that if you are on the pitch, and if the game started, you have to be there 100 percent, because people came into the stadium. They pay a lot of money, and they want to see the team. Maybe they want to see. They want to see you, and. Uh, you can't, you can't play there and say, oh, I'm not feeling good today, and mm, I'm a little bit boring, and oh, I don't want to play. This is, this is not the attitude. So as a sportsman, you learn, the game is started, you are 100%, 100% uh, on the pitch and 100% there. And that's what I, what I did at that time. You're right, it was quite an, it was quite an, not an easy time, a hard time, a lot of turmoil. Um, but yes, we had, uh, uh, we had the date, and uh, the, I said it before. That's what I did as a professional sportsman. You know, I blended out, I blended away everything, go on the pitch, and we make, uh, and we make the production. And you know, you are functioning, you are more functioning like a machine after uh, it was very hard, yeah. but then, you know, the weeks after, I think you calm down, you relax more and more, and then you can reflect, and then you can think about, but not, but not too long. I know a lot of people, you know, they, after they had some uh, hard times, then they uh, go away to a lonely island and sitting there over weeks, but what are you trying to find there? <laughs> yeah. What are you trying to find there? Yeah, you can also go with your, with, with your family. I think it's so important that you have persons uh, where you can speak with. And then come back, come back into, 
into action. You Immer know? weitermachen. Yeah, yeah, but 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 sensible. Yeah. You know, immer weitermachen. That doesn't mean that you always run against the same wall. You know, that's not the meaning of 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 immer weitermachen. Um, and from my point of view, it's much more um, better than to come back to come back in doing because you can work out things of the past also if you are doing new things. And from my point of view, much more better than digging deeper and deeper and deeper into um, your emotions and trying to find the big thing what you did not, uh, what you did not write, you know? I think, yes, we can learn out of failures, out of mistakes sometimes. But not every, but not every time, because there are a lot of mistakes and failures. They, they, they happen, and you can't do anything, uh, anything against it. So this like uh, shit happens, yeah. you know. Is that also when we had a conversation about startups? You said I give you, I give you an example. Um, I give you an example that you can <laughs> understand. That you can understand. I played um, the World Cup final uh, 2002 against Brazil. And uh, I made, one, one, I made one, one mistake. I think it was in the 70th minute of the game. The ball uh, was shot on goal, I think, from, from Cafu, Brazilian player. It was, I said, World Cup final. And I could not catch the ball. And then Brazil scored, uh, and it was 1-0. And uh, a few minutes later, they, they, they made the 2-0, and uh, the World Cup final uh, was lost because of my mistake. So, OK, people ask me, Oof, what do you learn out of that? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, not much. <laughs> I said, why? Yeah, what should I learn out of that mistake? That I should catch the ball? Wow. <laughs> this is a great, this is a, this is a great learning. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you have to distinguish. I yeah. think that's, that's very important. You have to distinguish between failures and mistakes. You really can le learn out of, out of thumb, uh, something. And failures, you know, shit happens. That's what, I, that's what I said. And then go on. You already answered my, my, last, my, my next question. So when we talk about startup, there's one thing that I remember you say. I love the vibe. I love the energy. But there's something I don't like about the startup culture. It's the fuck up nights. I don't like the fuck up nights. Maybe no, 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 no. I didn't, I didn't say that at all. <laughs> I'm not sure where you got it from. Um, I think this is, this, is, this is something good. You know, you, you, you go or you meet, you meet someone and you talk about what was not going uh, in the right way. But I don't like this, this, um, this attitude that um, Failure always is very easy. It is not, you know. It is always hard to work yourself out on harsh and, and difficult uh, situations. But I, but I said it before, you have to clearly analyze uh, what was happening, what could I maybe make better, but not dig too deep and it should not take too much time with this, uh, with this, yeah, with to uh, to analyze uh, uh, something like this, and that's what I that's what I meant, you know. But it, it's not, you know, making mistakes or, or failure. This is not something. Ha ha ha! Yeah, it's easy, and now we go on. No, no, no. It it it's, it it is in it. It is in yourself. You feel it in yourself, you know. When I lost uh, games, that's not a problem. But when you lose a Champions League final in this way, like I had in 1999, um, you know, that doesn't take, then I couldn't go to a fuck up night and say, oh, we lost the Champions League final, that's not a problem, and tomorrow we go on, and no. <laughs> you know, that's. I ask you and you. Yeah, that, that sticks deep, deep yeah. in yeah. yourself, and you need some time to work yourself out of that. But you can be stronger but, with that. Uh, two years later, you won the Champions League, right? Yes, absolutely. And um, yeah, as I, as I already said, we can adapt. I think um, as a human being, being, you can, you are made to adapt even 
for the strongest and worst situations you can, you can imagine. And that's why I'm here now, I'm, 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 I'm 54 years old and I had this kind of experience, hard things, successes, failures, successes, failure, and I also adapt, adapt, adapt. And that's why I, today I can handle very harsh uh, situations um, as I think in a, in a good way. So we are really able to adapt even to the hardest and worst situations in life. What would you consider your biggest mistake and what do you learn from that? Well, I hate this question. <laughs> That's why we're asking it. <laughs> well, biggest mistake. Or this biggest is, learning. Yeah, but this is wrong thinking. So it's never negative thinking. What is your biggest mistake? I think we make a lot. Biggest laugh. learning. Okay. But that's, <laughs> but that's nearly the same. <laughs> I think there is no biggest mistake. I think um, we all make, from, the, from time to time, we all make mistakes. We all uh, have failure uh, in our life. But I think there is one key principle for me which is very important when in the morning I go in the bathroom and look in the mirror. And I want to say, yes, you tried it. Yes, you take the challenge. Maybe you failed. Maybe you make mistakes, but that's okay. But I don't want to look in the mirror saying, hmm, why didn't you try it? Why didn't you try? Why did, why did you shy away? from this challenge. And believe me, that sticks much more longer in yourself than if you take the challenge and maybe then you fail. That's okay, then you can go on. But if you have to ask yourself uh, over time, over time, why didn't I try it? Why didn't I try it? I don't want to have that at all. Is that your <laughs> That's also your advice for people who want to start a startup? Yes, absolutely. But if you want to start a startup, I made, the same, uh, I made the same experiences. You all know you have a 15 to 20% chance of being successful. And that's a huge, that's a huge challenge. And I've always been asked, what can, what can, what can you learn from, from sport? You know, what can companies, managers, entrepreneurs, what can they learn from sport? There are a lot of things uh, um, that, that you can learn from sport, but they're always the same things. What you need is discipline. You need the discipline every day. What you need is belief. I think it's so important that you believe in what you are doing. You need a clear uh, strategy, you need a clear goal, and you need this kind of, of ability, you know, to handle setbacks. And it's like in sport, it's like if you are playing on the field, you win, you lose, you win, you lose, you win, you lose, uh, except you're playing for Bayern Munich, then you only win, <laughs> but, that's, but that's a different story. But normally in sports, you're always between winning and losing, and you have to handle that. You have to learn out of, of your setbacks and, and go on. So uh, a lot of similarities uh, between sports and entrepreneurship. Yeah, that's right. One thing I really am interested personally is, like you speak very openly about ambition, hunger for success, and what it can do to people. What does success mean today for you? And maybe you can take us on a journey how that developed over time, because I'm sure it did. <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I'm a guy from, from the 80s. I grew up in the 80s. I'm a child of the 80s. So success is very easy. Have your house, your yacht. And, <laughs> and what was the third thing? House, yacht, and wife? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yes, <laughs> yes, you are right. Car, I think, was, was, okay. uh, was equally important, was I guess. The third thing, yeah. <laughs> but um, that really, really changed over time. <laughs> so I think I reflected very well about, uh, about that. 
Um, so yes, absolutely, uh, it changed over the time. You know, the item um, success. I think what does success mean? You will have, I think, here in the room, poo, a lot of different uh, different opinions about uh, about success. Um, but I think at now, actually, for me, um, success is to have the freedom, the liberty to do things that I really want to do. Hmm. I think this is something which is, um, which is very important for me, and that would be my definition of success now at the moment. We are perfectly on time, but there's one question I have. Bayern Munich CEO. Oh my god. <laughs> what surprised you the most? The short tenure. Thank you, Oli. Personally, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay. Learn, transform, grow. Masterplan.